Uh, probably during the week, I'll handle more of the back end stuff. When uh, a lot of times we get into the passing uh, situations, the D line was split from the back end, so uh, I just handle that. For for you uh, to move outside to inside, just what that's like for you. Obviously, it's kind of a natural position for you to be coaching. I'm sure. Just how much you like that. Uh, I like that. Uh, I played it, and when I started coaching, I was coaching inside backers. Uh, one thing I was playing with my wife the other day is a lot more work. There's a lot more work inside as far as you got to make calls and uh, more technique as far as in the passing game, you know, kind of with the outside guys, a little easy, a little easy. The days are a little short. But Larry, last year at the end of the season, Devin White kind of reflected and kind of admitted that he, he didn't do some things well towards the end of the season in terms of getting off blocks, playing with, uh, with discipline, being a little bit out of control. Um, what can you do, being a voice in his ear, to, to kind of get him back on track? I know he made a Pro Bowl last year, but, but there were some games where he wasn't quite that point. Well, you know, it's NBA playoffs, so a lot of times in basketball you're here, you know, let the game come to you. As playing linebacker, sometimes you want to make more plays and uh, – that get you in trouble sometimes. He just got to calm down. And uh, I always remind you, you got the goods. He's not a slow linebacker like I was where, you know, he's going to make his plays. He just got to trust the defense. And sometimes, you know, you might have a quiet game. It might be a couple games. But uh, you got to stick to the process, and he's going to make his plays. You stay healthy and play 17 games, you're going to make a ton of plays. Following up from that, is it easier to teach a guy to play downhill or is it easier to stop a guy from playing downhill? Well, it's always you better say whoa than sick him. But um, playing far as playing downhill, you got to know the technique and what's the call. You know, a certain defense is what I'm doing now is, hey, when these calls, you can be aggressive to the run. You can be faster. You can anticipate run. Certain calls, you got to be a little slow trigger and uh, make sure you protect us in the pass game first. You didn't have any draft picks. Uh, how involved were you with them and, and what do you like about them? Uh, they're good athletes. Our scouts really uh, handled that part and um, they can still play. I mean, it's tough when uh, in the draft, there's only about 260 get drafted, something like that. So there's a lot of good ball players. You know, I played with a Hall of Famer, James, well, soon to be Hall of Famer, hopefully. James Harrison, those type of guys that. Uh, and it's important. I put pressure. I always joke with the scouts. If you want to win the Super Bowl, you better win free agency and late rounds. Larry, we didn't see much of KJ Brett and Grant Stewart outside of special teams, but what can you take away from those guys watching their film, whether it's practice or the preseason last year, or the little bit of, of play that they had on Sundays as defensive players for you at the inside linebackers? Well, what just the, the last month being together, them guys love ball. They're serious about it. Believe it or not, you know, you can run into some professional players that don't love ball. And I'm thankful that those guys love ball. So now you know that you can work with them. They're going to improve. Uh, everybody's seen Grant. He's a warrior on special teams. Uh, probably one of the best in the league last year. KJ, he's a Mike linebacker. He's a no-nonsense guy. And uh, I'm impressed so far because playing that position, you've got to be the quarterback of the defense. And uh, he's accepting that challenge. And uh, I'm excited to work with them two guys. When you were playing, you could hit a guy down the field. How hard is it to coach <laughs> linebackers that once you get to five yards, you can't make any contact? Uh, it's tough. Uh, you got to know where you at. As far as some of our passing, uh, our passing calls, you got to put your feet at four and a half, something like that, and know, make sure you're sliding. A lot of times we open up 45, so you know they can call that. But you got to play the game. Got to be aggressive. If we're playing a good tight end, you know, that's going to be a point of emphasis that week. Make sure we bang that guy, slow that guy down. But I got to stay on him. But, you know, flags are going to happen. We just got to respond. Last year, after you won the Super Bowl, there were so many opportunities for everybody, including Devin. The offseason is just different, right? You're playing longer than anybody else, Super Bowl champion. So how is this offseason different for him in terms of how he's preparing versus last year, if any? Well, I can give him the coach standpoint, and I can give him an ex-player standpoint for, you know, contract is coming up. You know, that's always good. Whatever you got to do to motivate him, but uh, I didn't threw that in his ear a little bit. And you see the salary cap and stuff like that and what linebackers getting, so I, you know, I'll throw that in his ear a little bit. But, uh, you know, you want to keep getting better, and he is a guy that want to go down and be great. You want to be get a gold jacket one day. 
and you know the physical tools are there, so he got to do it upstairs. Is film a big part of that? Is learning how to watch film, what you're watching, not just watching it, but actually? Absolutely, and you know, I'm putting, uh, I tell these young guys, you got to focus too. That That's a muscle. Uh, that's a muscle that you got to keep uh, getting stronger and stronger. So, uh, you know, we live in a world of social media. <laughs> I got to give them guys breaks. But them guys, if you focus the longer, you're going uh, to make that play. It's a game of inches. I know you're not, um, you're not Levante's doctor, but just from what you've heard and seen, how optimistic are you that he'll be back to Levante in short order? Oh, I'm quite sure he'll be back. I haven't heard otherwise. Uh, he played that playoff uh, game. It wasn't 100%, but uh, he's ready to roll, uh, especially when Tom came back. You know, the older guys, you know, they, they got fired up. Well, speaking of Levante, he was up here a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and he talked about the fact that he didn't make as many splash plays. And he mentioned tackles for loss, that he didn't make nearly as many of those as, as he's used to making. What do you attribute that to? And, and you really – you feel that, that fire for him to get back to that playmaking style that he's known for? Now, you see, when I walked into the room, I got two of those questions. <laughs> so they're getting that on social media, players. They're looking at previous years. Just play the game. The plays will be made. Trust me, in this defense, we are aggressive style defense. And I'll throw it back at them and say, hey, we're blitzing you. Make a play. Make a play. And uh, that's what they need to concentrate inside the defense. You win and lose in this game by Mr. Simons. And them guys got to understand they got to block out the noise. And trust me, if you're healthy, and he should know that, and when you're healthy, your plays are going to be made. And, you know, I told Devin back, you know, two years ago, he had like nine sacks. That is not the norm. Do not count on that. That is not the norm. Uh, three to four, that should be your range. Anything else, that's great. But if you look at all the Hall of Fame stats, you're not getting nine sacks as an off-the-ball backer. So, uh I got to fight that. They get that quite. I got it twice. <laughs> but uh, them guys just got to play uh, team ball, and uh, we, we're after the ring. You saw teams attack you guys different. I mean, it was so much perimeter, right? And that's smart. You're not going to try to run up inside with those two big guys, and, and that protects your linebackers. But do you guys have to make an adjustment, whether it's in coverage or, you know, the perimeter or what they're doing in terms of, you know, trying to, trying to scheme against you like they do every week? Oh, yeah. You got to play the game. Uh, it's a chess match. Uh, we're playing, depends what teams you're playing and what they're trying to look at. You know, what I teach them guys is formation. It's, uh, I'm sharing with them guys this morning, some of them line, uh, them linemen, they'll tell you a story. Some of you guys, well, I know you guys know Mike Singletary, the eyes was big because he's trying to f find a, a, a key. And normally them guys that tell us if it's run or pass and it's such college style RPO and play action. So we got to be ready to react to the run or the pass. You guys haven't, uh, haven't re-signed Kevin Minter, and obviously you still could, but if you didn't, how common would you be in, in, in somebody like Brett being your third back? If he keep growing, uh, I'm impressed with him so far. We need uh, a guy that knows the defense, and if one of those two guys go down, we don't miss a beat. And he got to prove that to us and Coach Bowles and walkthroughs, and he's doing a great job these last couple weeks. And uh, it's tough for a young guy to, you know, replace an older guy. It's a lot of pressure, so uh, – as long as he keep uh, growing at this pace, uh, we'll be comfortable with him. Where do you see, where do you need to see Britt and Stewart take the next step? Is it merely just an experience type of thing? Yeah, just play, just play, uh, just keep showing up. First step, getting better, is showing up, and uh, just keep uh, developing. And so far in the classroom, uh, they're, they're responding. They're responding for the information that's given, and, and they're they're doing a good job spitting it back. What have you seen from Joe trying to train the last year? Uh, you know, obviously you're moving inside, but you spent all last season Correct. with him. That makes you guys feel comfortable that he's ready to take the next step and, and to a starting role. Oh, it's year two. Uh, I was impressed with him. I was, you know, I'm always nervous that first year rookie. You know, that's really the first time in probably five years, probably even back in high school, you had that much freedom. And he stayed here in Tampa, and I, I was uh, surprised. I was happy about that. I don't even want him going back home. We know all, what can happen with that, but. He stayed here with Anthony. He looks good, and uh, we're expecting big things from him. Coach, I know it's a long, long way off. Can you use the way the season ended and the, how it ended to use that for motivation for for your guys? Absolutely. Uh, we were very close. Uh, I know that's a rough game, but we got back in it. We were very close. We know injuries played a big part in it, but 
hey, the time is now. The time is now with veterans, uh, especially on the back end. I was looking at a lot. We're not young now, no more. I mean, we got a lot of four-year guys, so uh, I'm expecting them guys on defense to uh, make a big step. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, guys. Have a good How y'all doing today? Good. Good.